Okay, in this lesson, we'll be introduced to our second function or model, which will be quadratic models. So, just as a review, remember linear models or linear functions can be modeled by straight lines. Okay, quadratic models can be can be modeled by what we call parabolas. They're U-shaped, all right? They can open up or they can open down. All right, these are called parabolas. Okay. And so, quadratic function, so the form. So, function notation, of course. You've got f of x equals a times x squared plus b times x plus c. Now, notice you've got a couple of rules here. You've got, or conditions, I guess you would say. A and B and C, they're all real numbers. So, what you call the real number system. And A can't be zero. Because if A was zero, you would not have a quadratic function. You would have a linear function. And as I said earlier, the domain, or well, the graph is, is called a parabola. The domain of quadratic functions is a set of all real numbers. So, how do we go about um, solving, graphing, interpreting quadratic functions in, in some applications? So, let's look at an example. So, we're given a quadratic function, right? It has the, fo the form um, ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, that's your call your standard form all right now we're going to identify the coefficients c is actually a constant term so in this case this x squared term has an understood coefficient of one our b term is four and our constant term is three okay so now we use what's called the discriminant Okay, so once we identify coefficients and constant term, we find we use what's called the discriminant to, de to determine the type and number of solutions. Okay, so you take your B, which in this case is 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3. We evaluate that expression as 16 minus 12, so our discriminant is 4. So, since our discriminant is 4, and let's clean this up. Since the discriminant is 4, we have what you call 2 called two real solutions which simply means that the graph as, you, as we discussed in uh, the linear functions lesson this, this function has two x intercepts or it touches the x axis axis twice okay if your discriminant is zero you have one real solution. If your discriminant is negative, you don't have any real solutions, which simply means uh, there's no real solution. Okay, so so we know we got two real solutions. Okay, then we move on and say, well, does this function open up or down? Now, we know A equals one, okay? Since A is positive, A is greater than zero or positive. The graph opens up. So your parabola will look like that. It's U-shaped and it's opening up. OK, 
okay and since it's op the graph is opening up the next so our graph is opening up and again that's just a sketch we have what you call a minimum value right there that's our minimum value now if your graph was opening down or a was negative you would have a maximum value so those are your two options for quadratic function next we move on to what's called the axis of symmetry so the formula for axis of symmetry is x equals the opposite of b all over 2 times a and you can insert parentheses if need be now our b in this case a was 1 b was 4 c was 3 so you substitute your values and then with negative 4 over 2 times 1 which is negative 4 over 2 which is negative 2 so x equals or the axis of symmetry x equals negative 2 all right and the axis of symmetry is a vertical line that is used to create a mirror image it splits it goes right through that vertex and creates your mirror image okay so let's review we know this graph is opening up we know it has a minimum value and then we know the axis of symmetry is negative 2. Now notice that the axis of symmetry splits the graph in half. That point is called the vertex. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this axis of symmetry and we're going to substitute it into our function. So f of negative 2 equals so our original function was we had x squared plus 4 times x plus 3 so we're going to substitute negative 2 throughout for all our x values and we end up with 4 minus 8 plus 3 so f of negative 2 equals negative 1. So our vertex is negative 2, negative 1. So now let's review again. So, so far we have a quadratic function that's opening up. It has a minimum value. It has an axis of symmetry at the point or at the line x equals negative 2 is the axis of symmetry. And the vertex or this point is negative 2, negative 1. So, so now we're going to move on to find called intercepts okay and we reviewed that in the last lesson so I like to do the y intercept first because it's the easiest we know x equals 0 so you take your function all your x values become 0 so you end up with y equals 3 now that's a point so that's 0, 3 is your y-intercept. Now, x-intercepts, just take your time. Notice this b squared minus 4ac. We already dealt with that in the first, well, second slide. That's the same thing as your discriminant. Okay, so we're going to just say the x-intercept equals negative b plus or minus the square root, and we can rewrite this of the discriminant all over 2 times a. So we're going to substitute our values. So in our, our case, a was 1, b 
B was 4, C was 3. I'm going to substitute our values. And our discriminant was equal to 4. So we end up with negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 all over 2 times 1. Okay, so this will end up being x equals negative 4 plus or minus square root of 4 is 2 all over 2. So you can break this down again and this will be, you can actually go negative 4. 4 plus 2 all over 2. That'll be your first answer. And you have x equals negative 4 negative 4 minus 2 over 2. All right, you, you simplify and you end up with uh, x equals negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. And that's your x sub 1. x sub 2 will equal negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3. So our x-intercepts will be negative 3, 0, and negative 1, 0. Those are our x-intercepts. Okay? And then our next slide is we want to graph it. So I've got this app where I can graph. So let's add. So it's asking me for the form. Now notice y equals, we're going to go ahead and put our function in. So x squared plus 4x plus 3. And hit enter. Let's we'll actually take that out. Hit done. And notice that's our graph. And let's, let's do a little bit of investigation. Okay. Keep going. All right. So notice you have a, a y-intercept at, let's see, at a y-intercept at 0, negative 3, or 0, 3, you have x-intercepts at negative 1, 0, negative 3, 0, and your vertex is actually negative 2, negative 1. So that's your graph. So notice it's U-shaped, it's opening up, and everything that you found by hand, you can find graphically. Okay? And so that's how... You go through the process of, I guess you would say, investigating quadratic functions.